Marty Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. And good evening. It is a Monday night. It is 9 o'clock. It is time to uh, tin your tip with myself, Gary Dibley, and the ever-capable mod master that is Mark. Um, all going well so far. Uh, if you tuned in last week, um, you probably noticed I had a little few problems when we were trying to do the um, the, the children in need raffle thing. Um, it all went wonky, and I think it was because I was trying to do two many things at once and it just it wasn't happening um green screening new camera this that and the other donkey that's all i'm gonna say um but yes hopefully we had some good winners um lots of winners i think mark got most of it um and and then there was a couple of else you know it was totally random as i've said um and i posted up the links if you want to check out the random generator yourself feel free um so yeah, I, I will be posting all of those out tomorrow. I packed them all up over the weekend. Um, my wife looked at them today and said that was an absolute crap job. Um, oh, I shouldn't say that. She said that wasn't a very good job, Dibley. Um, so she's re gone out and bought re new envelopes today and repacked everything. So they all will be in the post uh, tomorrow. I'd just like to say a quick thing. My mum, she had a bless her bless her cottons she had an operation um, a couple of days ago and uh, and she came out she had to go back in today because she had an infection um, I just like to say don't worry mum I have bought you the rubber ring I promised to to buy you um, to, to alleviate pressure um, and I hope that hasn't embarrassed you in the slightest at all um, so yes get well mother and she does tune in and watch um, as does my sister and I have a feeling I may be dead after those comments. Um, what have we got lined up for you tonight? Um, tonight I will be uh, having a look at the um, at the box mod uh, that we were, we were talking about, and I was in a bit of a bit of a quandary, and you'll see why uh, a little bit later on. And and Mark finishes up um, the if you like the the little micro board we were looking at that we tried to show during <laughs> bleeding raffle last week, and it all went tears. Um, Obviously, you know, if, if you guys have been paying any attention to what's been going on recently, the firm message is still, obviously, keep up with the tweeting, um, keep in contact with your MEPs, your MPs, um, and, and let's just keep the momentum going. Um, it is not that long off before, you know, we, we've got to make an impact now and, uh, and all that sort of stuff. That's not what I do. Um, that will be coming up in, in the next few days where the guys will be giving you uh, an update on, on where we are with that. Um, what I'm going to do is quickly slip in to uh, Mark's first little video um, with fingers crossed that this damn thing works this time and uh, I'll pop back in two. If everything had gone to plan, what you should have been seeing now is me going through these potentiometers and installing them onto the board. But I've had a card failure so that footage is gone. So I'm going to go back through a few of the steps that I went through. So I've got three different kinds of 200 kilo ohm potentiometers here because I wasn't entirely certain what I wanted for this device. I've got the standard horizontal mounted one that you may have seen in several things. I've got a vertical mounting one just for variety in case I want to put anything through a hole in the side of a case. And this one which I'm going to use today which is a small one which is easy to turn with your fingers so you can just move it around and what I'm going to do is mount it on a piece of strip board which is fairly simple to use and I'm going to go through that now so I'll zoom this out what I want is a piece that's three tracks wide because three of these pins and I'm just going to use the cutters to cut it off and I want to cut a piece with five holes on around about there and just cut straight through snap the board <laughs> and it cuts fairly easily 
So then this I would mount the particular potentiometer I want through the back and sort of onto here and that gives me wire placements to add the wires easily. That means I can mount it inside the case wherever I need it. And for instance if I was going to use this one, I would mount it like that. And I can have this up against the side of the case so I can drill a hole through into it so you can control it from outside easily. But the one I'm going to be working with today is this one. Get through the right set of holes. And it's quite an easy process. And this you just want to have a solder on the end. Very quickly, just sort your legs in place like that. And like I said, that will sit in the board like so, eh, inside the case like so. And what I'd do is I'd run the three wires through these three holes, remembering that the centre one. Is the control one, and then what you would end up with, and what you should have seen earlier, is this. So the three wires soldered through the holes, connecting to this. So now I need to test it out and see what we get. I've still got no idea if this actually works. Out. Oh, there we go. That's now registering 4.3 volts. Much better. And a quick turn. And that display appears to be faulty. But I have a feeling. One or two of you might be wondering why I've immediately jumped to the conclusion that the display is faulty. And that's because I was cutting corners and this display is the one I abused in a previous experiment with the board. I thought it was okay but apparently not when it goes to a higher voltage. So let's have a look at the output I'm getting from the board. As you see there it's registering 7 volts at the moment. And that appears to be the maximum output of the board. So that's good. And I appear to have a fairly. Oh no. hold things in the right position it would help. That's all the way down to 0.85 volts. And slowly. Quite a small adjustment really. Go all the way up through the settings. So it looks like we're good to go. As soon as I can replace the display that is. So I've went ahead and I've found a replacement display for this. So I'm just going to remove the old one. Like so. And I can go in the bin. the new one in place. And 
because this is going to be in final position. I'm just going to pop the wires through from the back and solder it in properly now. Right, so we're back in the room for another week. I'm going to be jumping around a bit today. Um, not sure where I'm going, um, but obviously uh, I've got my little box. Now, I'm going to start drilling out some of the holes, or I have drilled out some of the holes for this. I'm still really undecided as, as to what I put in there. Um, the original plan, obviously, was for the uh, DNA 20, um, or a VAMO. Now, I've got another couple of options that have come into me. Mainly because um, Lamentor, who is uh, he's one of our sort of uh, followers, I shall say, and, and he's normally found in chat, um, sent me something that sort of has put me all in a tiz, um, which was this. He sent me over a, uh, a Nintendo controller. Now, I've really been wanting... To, to do the DNA in the Nintendo controller. Um, really have been wanting to do that. So I'm, I'm all of a quandary, what do I do? Um, add to the mix, uh, I managed to get hold of a, uh, a couple of these Groove mods um, that were faulty and, and, and was, should have been sent back for destruction. Um, I've had a look at it, I know, uh, I think a lot of the problem was with the earthing in these and the cases are just as rattly as hell but they do work and they work very very well um, I could rehouse the gubbins from this hopefully within this box um, a nice little screen there etc um, etc et so I'm for once I'm spoiled for choice I, I just don't know what I'm gonna put in that wooden box um, we all know how the uh, how the Vamo performs, and for me, they are, if you like, a, a staple in my modding arsenal. Um, just recently, it's been the Sid, but this thing this thing still fires. I mean, that's it. What's that? Eight and a half watts. And it works very well. Um, however, because of their sort of uh, inherent problems, which is nothing to do with the circuitry as far as I'm, I'm aware, I think it is definitely down to the other thing. And looking inside there, you can sort of see why. Um, so where do I go? Do I put the DNA in here? Do I put the DNA in here? Yeah, do I put the, the Vamo in here? Do I put the, the, the guts of the groove in here? I, I, I'm really, really, really lost. The groove has got a very good battery, um, which is going to come in useful. And this is sort of uh, where I was looking with the other bits. What I've done thus far um, with it, with this box is I've drilled my assy hole. Now, I've drilled my assy hole ever so slightly off central. Um, there's very good reason for that and I'll show you because I want to be using it with a certain type of atomizer um, and the sort of atomizer I want to use it with um, doesn't basically have a breathe hole so if I just stick my 510 connection on there slap me size on roughly and pop this in the top what that does is that frees up this side uninterrupted so this can be my my fixed side this can be there I mean it doesn't look that bad when it's sat like that and you can see you can roughly see how how small the box is in comparison to the, to the attic um, so I've already got my hole drilled out and it's there and it's ready to go um, switch wise I'm still in a quandary. I've got a load of stuff coming in. Um, I was hoping to be sort of steaming ahead with this today. Got juice everywhere. Hoping to be steaming ahead with this today. But my buttons haven't come and this and the other. Um, so a bit of undecidedness on there. The other good thing in drilling that out, um, my 
good old faithful Roby decided to go west. Now it is definitely down to the battery packs and I can get new battery packs so I'm going to keep this one in reserve but I managed to grab an early Christmas present off the wife and uh, and she treated me to 14.4 uh, volt boosh. It's nice. Good drill. It's good. That is. It made. It was going like like butter through there, basically. What I'm going to do is, i found, if you like, and I don't know whether this is going to work yet, I've found um, uh, a battery pack that I think may well fit. Um, and it comes from a, a source that I've currently got on charge. Now, <coughs> in, excuse me, in order to do this, I'm going to have a look at dissecting, take one apart, and uh, I'll pop back into, I'll show you realistically what I'm looking at using um, and we'll have a live test fit and, and see how that goes. Back in two. And there and we go. He's done it again, hasn't he? Um, echo. I'm going to go away and and probably drill through my hand um, in in terms of punishment uh, for the echo. Um, shouldn't have happened. Let me pop into our first ad break, and I'll come back very shortly. Liberty Flight sponsors Ten Year Tip with Gary Dibley. in Yorkshire for your basic needs. That's iVeber.co.uk and iVeber-Elixir.co.uk iVeber and iVeber-Elixir.co.uk Pro sponsors of VeberTrails.tv Liberty Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. He did it. And we're back in the room once again. I would I would love to tell you what is being typed into the team chat, but all I can say is it starts with a T, it ends in a T, and it is aimed at me. Um, so you can you can come to your own conclusions just what word that is. Um, just carrying on. Yes, my poor mother. I, I did notice that the, the in chat somebody had typed um, that my mother is is frantically trying to to work out how to uh, post pictures of me as a baby on the net. I have no problems with that whatsoever um, because my mother once when I bought her a fax machine so she could. This is before internet. This is way before internet. I bought her a fax machine so she could communicate with my sister who lived in Tenerife. Um, and she called me up and uh, she said, I keep sending this damn bit of paper, um, but it keeps coming out the bottom. Um, I keep trying and trying and trying, but it just won't go to, to your sister in Tenerife. Um, my sister phoned me up 
and said, can you talk to mum and find out why she keeps sending the same facts 50 times? Um, so I have no problem whatsoever in my mother managing the internet um, at all. Uh, with all that, I'm, I'm going to die. I'm off the Christmas list already. Um, but yeah, she was. <laughs> she thought the bit of paper went there. Oh, go, yeah, don't go there. Um, let's go on with our next little video from Mark uh, where he continues with this micro board. Nicely on these boards, they do have double holes both ends, which is why I'm soldering this directly into the board rather than through the 510 connector. I just end up with a bit of a neater job. So, one last test, and fingers crossed, everything works this time. I don't seem to be having much success for this rig. Nothing to do with the board, just bad luck, I think. And too many attempts at cutting corners. Right. So there it's. There's, right, there it's set at 5.9. Seven point two, seven point three, which seems to be the maximum. And then below what it'll output. Which is basically three point two three point three is the specs for this. So there you go. When your display is off, you've got it way too low. Because I've never vaped anything below 3.3 .3 anyway. So we're all good. And of course you can always use a small Phillips head or flathead screwdriver to adjust this, which may make it a bit easier once it's in the rig. So now I've finally got something that works. It's just gonna be a matter of putting it all together. First job is going to be some more desoldering. I can use the other holes for this when it comes to be put together. Tin, which is exactly the same state as where I left the show last time. And I need a wire that's just enough room there. And I run the wires down this side. The switch is going to run down the back up to the switch and then from there out. The positive, I'm just going to run up to the front directly under the board just to keep it simple. So I'm going to switch this the conventional way, I'm just going to switch the negative, I think. So I've got a small piece of wire, this is going to go down under the 
lower of the two contacts. I'm going to do that one first because otherwise the other one will get in the way. So just quickly tin up. And that's the one wire in. And I'm going to leave the negative intact. Repeat the process. Being as quick as I can. So as not to damage the switch mechanism. Sit nicely in there. And the negative comes down to the board here. Tinned up already, and so is the board. Very easy just to tack the wire straight onto there. The positive, I need to shorten considerably. And then just strip off the wire. Right, we're back in the room once again. In days gone by, I inherited a lot of these. Now, they've been sat in a drawer, um, basically doing absolutely nothing. The reason I've got these, these were faulty returns, and they all have sort of a common fault uh, you know, associated with them. Um, nothing to do with the battery, nothing to do with the electronics. It was mainly down to the uh, to the connections. Um, and that was basically um, when you had one of these and you popped your, your battery in. Now this one I've repaired, but uh, when you popped your battery in, don't pressed it down, it started to charge and your charge light come up there. I don't know if you can see that. The biggest problem, and, and the reason a lot of these got sort of went back and this, that and the other, was because of the, uh, the the connection that actually went to the battery inside. Um, that was a very, very weak point and you used to put your batteries in, they wouldn't charge, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to show you... Oh, the old guitar's going off. Inside one of these. So we can have a, a little look at um, potentially what I'm thinking of doing. Um, it's very easy to take these apart. There is a simple screw on the side. I don't know why my video keeps going all yellow and this and the other. Take that side screw out. Now, this one on the other side was always a complete little git to get out. They just used to spin on themselves. So we might have to do a bit of butchery if this one doesn't come out. But it has. Essentially, Flip that open, flip the case open, and we've already got our gubbings come out, as you can see there. Case, bin. 
gone. So this is uh, the insides of a of a PCC. The common point of failure on these was always with this end. Um, they basically wouldn't sort of, uh, you know, it wouldn't make the connection because they were sprung loaded. And when you pop your battery in, it made a connection where you pause in your egg and then started to charge your battery. Your little light there, I don't even see that. Your little light would light up when your battery made the contact. And you see that flick went on off. That was a, the, the weak point, that switch, the, the trigger mechanism down in there. So these were, or these are, all good. Now, the beauty of, of these things is this, the out of focus battery. I've got quite a few of these. Um, you could say I've probably got about 30 of, of these things that have been sat there waiting to do something. Um, and they are basically, this one isn't marked up with what it is. Let me, I've got one here. Another one. They're all sort of the same spec battery. Here's another one here. As you can see, they are marked as there's obviously 3.7 volt batteries and they are 1300 milliamp hour batteries um, all pretty much identical um, same battery packs so there's got to be something of use in these the one thing I want to do uh, this one here I know is a good one and I'm keeping the charging circuit on because if I do use these in in the way that I want to um, I'm gonna effectively stack them so I need to make sure they're both charged to the same level um, they are both uh, you know identical in charge levels this that, and the other um, same scenario as, as we see the other day or a couple of weeks ago in the Darwin um, basically stacking up the batteries this one here has got a couple of wires pop through the board I'm just going to remove the board off here now, if anybody does fancy having a play with these, like I say, I've got a fair few of them. If you're happy to foot the postage, I'm quite happy to uh, send them out. Send me a, a self-addressed envelope with a postage paid on them, and I'll let you have one. But in their day, these were the things, these were... The deadly dongles of everything, um, and this is your little charging board in here uh, for, for both the battery and and the um, and the e-cig. What I'm just going to do is take that connection off, and I'm just going to take those two connections off there to the battery, and that'll leave me a board and a battery. Now, as you can see. A basic uh, USB board although it's large it's got all the LEDs and bits and pieces on the back for charge state this that, and the other um, that could be used in a mod but this is going to be very 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 big in comparison to your standard USB charging board now which is something like that I'll probably favor this over this um, but again this is still useful in terms of, uh, it was a dual purpose. It, it, it's connected so it can actually charge uh, the e-cig from this battery, as well as charging this battery when the USB is plugged in there. So it's a dual purpose job. For me, that one is going in the mod. Um, like I say, batteries are tiny. Now, the big question I needed to look at, or, or wanted to look at, was will, will this fit in this box? If I went down the route of, of doing something like that, would it fit? And quite simply, I would probably get two of those quite happily in there. It would probably function perfectly well on one. But then, would I get the, the DNA in there? Um, what I'd then be looking at is, is potentially mounting all my DNA stuff on, on one of these bits um, with a switch and stuff on the outside, so switch, display, plus and minus. Again, it's, it's all up in the air. 
um, but two of these are probably going to function pretty much like it did in, in the um, in the Darwin. Um, so 1300 mile batteries stacked up. Potential. There is definitely, definitely, definitely potential in that. Let me pop away and uh, I'll come back in two. And there we go, we're back in the room once again. And yes, again, I've, I've managed to uh, kill the echo. Um, I'm getting good at this. You, you would think after nearly two years, um, I would know where the damn mute button is. Um, I'm learning slowly. Um, yes, so there we go. Let's pop into our first little air break. We'll, first, second. Um, it's, it's a bad night again. Pop back in two. Liberty Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. Sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley. And we are back. Yes, memory loss. I think it's one of those things I've I've been suffering for. I'm gonna I'm gonna make excuses now. Um, sinus is blown. Uh, you know, the family colds. Um, mothers with operations. It's affecting the brain. Um, it's been like I said at the start, a damn long week this week. It's a good point. Um, hopefully, I don't know what the picture's like, but um, I'm definitely a lot cooler in here tonight. Uh, I've changed out the uh, the halogen bulbs for LEDs, um, but I'm not sure whether it's working. I'm only looking at myself. I don't know. Um, I think I need to rejig the lighting again and and do something different. But the LEDs are definitely far cooler than halogens in your face. I could definitely say that. Let me uh, show you what we've got lined up for the rest of the week.
there we go that's what we've got lined up this week and don't forget as well to tune in to the guys uh, in RY4 Radio pretty much most of the week and uh, obviously our own Vaping Dares is on there um, yeah good show if you've not listened tune in tune in very good one um, so apparently the lighting is working um, I'm hoping um, it, it looks a bit weird on my screen but if it's working that's good we'll leave it exactly where it is I'm struggling to believe that um, in two weeks time tomorrow is Christmas Eve um, so I, it's time to start shopping I'm thinking um, it's, it's got to be coming if I leave it till next week that's the week before and that's when it gets manic um, I don't know I wouldn't even the weather this year has not been we've had wind and this that, and the other but it's not been as bad as as a normal December let me crack in with Mark's last little bit and I, I must say uh, much respect to Mark he's persevered with this damn little thing um, but I think this this final bit will show you that the um, that little tiny board that, that I had to play with and, and Mark is, is so you know so very he, he's put the external pot on there um, which has made it a completely different beast. Um, you'll see exactly what a different beast it is after this little video. Crack into this. I'll see you back in two. That's the car reconnected. So I'll sit somewhere down in there. And I'll display like so. And this, I think. Hmm. It's going to mount about there. It's going to be a little awkward to get there with fingers, but with a small screwdriver it shouldn't be a problem at all. Right, as you'll be able to see, I've finished the mod off. Uh, all I've done from the last time you saw it is I've added the 510 connector to the board and I've just added a layer of the clear epoxy resin all the way across the base to insulate everything and a bit up the side of here just to make sure that these don't short out on anything and to hold it all in place so as you'll see the strip board for the mounting of this makes it a lot easier to adjust everything gives you something to mount nicely into the board yeah, into the case I mean um, one word of warning if you're going to use the epoxy yeah, if you're going to use any epoxy, test before you add the epoxy as much as possible to make sure that all your connections are good and try and avoid getting anything on top of the board where uh, everything's soldered into so you can always take it out later because once you get epoxy on the top of here trying to remove it you're going to strip off components that are surface mounted and all sorts of connections that's happened to me recently but here we go. I've got a pair of batteries in and I press the button. Tell what. That's just the light. And there you've got it's currently at 4.3 volts. Uh, I'm just going to use a screwdriver because it's a lot easier to adjust. You see, it goes all the way up 7.6. Down and watch all the display fails. So we're all good there. But the next thing I need to test is how it performs under load. So I've got my usual testing equipment here. And this is a three and a half ohm coil, so this will stress it rather nicely. So it's currently set to 4.2. And when I screw this in place, it's still reading 4.2 and it's sizzling away nicely. So it's 
having no problem at all handling it. I'm going to take it down to 3.2, which is really the bottom end that you might be working at, really. And you're still getting, yeah, 3.2, 3.3. Not to worry. And the most important the top end if we take it all the way up. It's 7.2, 7.3. I know it won't give me that. I can say that without even testing. And you don't need that to be honest. So the maximum output 5.6 volts. That's under load of a three and a half ohm coil. If it can handle that, it's going to handle anything. So I think this is going to be a damn good board. But I have just discovered something interesting with this setup, which I need to update you on. And that is, if you see there, it's currently set at six volts. Well, if I put this back on here, I'm getting a strange reaction because. It's giving me six volts. But when I max it out, the voltage is dropping. So I'm not entirely certain what's happened there. So you can see there it's dropped down to Careful adjustment, and you might hear it um, gurgling away like mad now. It's gone all the way up to 6.5 volts under that load. So it seems to react differently when you get adjusting it up. So you're better off adjusting it to the voltage you want it to be at, and then putting whatever you want on it. Of course, the one thing I haven't shown you is the completed device. So, what I've done is I've just dropped a little magnet in here. So it'll hold the screwdriver in place. So I've always got that with me to make it easy to adjust. And there you've got it. Now, this lip around here you can remove a little bit of this to get it to flush if you really need to you can see that's quite a gap there but it does still fire fine this has a good connection on it but if you like it to be all flattened you could just take a uh, cutting tool, grinder or something, and just grind away this little bit here, and then it will sit pretty much flush with the connector. But I think I'll leave it like that. For now. Now, we were talking about batteries earlier, and obviously you've seen this one come out of the PCC. The one thing I'm just going to take a quick look at is inside of this uh, Groove mod. Now I'm just going to um, take all the little screws because regardless of, of what happens the, the board and that is going in something else. Um, I just don't like this case. It is a little bit uh, gold shall we say. Now if I could get my screwdriver in there that would be handy. I might just use my little mini one. It seems to handle the screws better. Yeah, I mean this this is just a little bit gold for me, um, as well as the uh, the problems with the insulation internally. But what I want to do is have a look at this to see exactly um, how we can use potentially either the battery 
and the circuitry or all of it like I say I'm still I'm still undecided how, how I go forward with this do I put the DNA in the in the box the wood box do I put the DNA in in the Wii controller um, do I vamo the you know or do I use this uh, this circuitry here from the groove in the controller the DNA 20 in the wood sort of is it feels like it should be right if you know what I mean feels like that that is screaming for it um, whether I use the uh, 14500 in there or those battery packs I don't know maybe we should ask the ask the audience what do you want to see in the box or where do you want to see the DNA go I mean does the DNA go in the in the controller does the DNA go in in the wood box um, and and then you know or, or does the internals of this go in the Nintendo I'm not sure let's just take that off now th <laughs> that is a big bugger of a battery um, that is a seriously big bugger of a battery in there look at that that's seriously large now this is completely different to the ones I've seen or the other one I dissected this is actually got whereas previously the the ones I've seen were literally just laid out on on this metal um, which give a, a lot of possibilities for, for shorting um, this one is, is laid out quite nicely inside and yeah that's interesting actually totally different design internally but we could be using uh, this board and display um, inside one of our mods I'm really thinking that battery is going to fit in there that would go in there very 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 well and if you, you're looking in terms of of rehousing the the groove um, that battery is mammoth the battery would go in here um, depth wise it's, it'd be tight um, and that display potentially could be cut in up here somewhere with with the DNAs what they tend to do is these these two buttons here um, when you relieve those internally uh, it's already got a nice little corner on each one it is simply a case of cutting out between the two buttons um, if you look at the DNA board across the two it fits pretty much well between those and and that is what they normally do um, I say that is what they normally do the people that are making these so that's normally where you'd see your DNA board and you use these two for firing and you can adjust these buttons for up and down in the wattage um, I'm, I'm sort of thinking that may be I don't know I, I, would lo I don't know I'll let you decide or with the uh, with the groove we could um, get this mammoth 3800 mile battery in here um, this little display we could probably cut it could cut that in anywhere you could cut that in just above here um, that display would probably sit down there with some jiggery pokery as well um, I'm not sure I'll leave it up to you but the one thing I've I have now realized from looking at that there is no way it is that battery <laughs> fit in there actually would it do you know with some work it would Oh, see that's throwing another spanner in the works I've got a 3800 mile back that would go in I'm pretty bloody sure it would with some work if you have a look at that and if I hold that oh I've lost my knob can't be doing that 
it would sort of. Oh, it's going to take a lot of work. But that's a slab of a battery to have in there. Not doable, I don't think. Definitely, definitely with these ones. If you look at the size of these compared to that, it's two of those. But realistically, two of these stacked is probably the same as that anyway. Who cares? I'm going to leave it up to you guys to decide. Um, bag of bits everywhere. Whichever way you decide, you know, or, or, or you think we should go forward, let me know. Do we uh, make this a 18500 and go with either the DNA or the thingy? Do we use one of these? two of those in there and go with the DNA or a VAMO which would still sort of fit in there some, somewhere. Um, do we use the smock and go in that or do we use the DNA in that either or. Like I say for the first time in a long time I've got too many bits to play with and too many ideas going through my head so let me know what you want to see um, and uh, either drop it on the Vapor Trails forum or let me know live as you're watching this um, and whichever way we decide to go I will crack on with um, next week like I say I'm waiting on, on my little switches to arrive for the wood I'm definitely going to continue with the wood but I just I don't know which way to go do we DNA it or do we uh, or do we VAMO it um, and then following on from there with this one, what do we do with that? Do we put that in there or do we do the DNA in there? Which means I've got to try and get that in that one. Up to you. You decide. Let us know. Back to me in the studio. See you in a bit. And there we go, we're back in the room. Um, lots of suggestions coming into, into chat as, as to the, the way you want to see that progress. Um, I'm happy, open to suggestions. We'll try and do what we can. Um, I think it was, it was probably back in 2010, I think. Um, I might have to dig the video out. Uh, I've got one from back then where I actually did a, a PlayStation 3 um, controller with, uh, it was sort of like a... It had a lead coming out of the PlayStation controller, sort of like a pass-through, which was powered by the battery and the controller still works on the PlayStation. Did that a long, long time ago. Um, and obviously, th it's, it's another two years down the line and we're back to controllers again. Um, good fun. So I'm, I'm really happy. I'm going to reach over and grab that. Really happy. And a big thanks to uh, the mental for, for sending me that. Um, I've seen the DNAs done in this and they do look stunning. Um, you know, I, I don't know. That wood box is is screaming at me, um, and and that was made by S J Pearson, um, who makes those on UK Vapors. That is a nice oak box with walnut sides. Um, so I want to do something special with that. Uh, I'm sort of thinking you know, I would I would like to put the DNA in that, but like I say, it's indecisive. Um, I don't know which way uh, to go with it. So happy to to take the lead from you guys. Um, and, and if you want to post it up on, on the UK Vapors chat, um, sorry, not don't post it there, that's pointless. Post it on the Vapor Trails TV chat in the Tin Your Tip section um, and uh, and I'll, I'll pick it up and we'll have a look. Um, I've got some stuff on order. Um, it's coming all the way from China. Now, the post being what it is, I've got a lot of switches and bits and pieces on the way to play with. I'm not sure whether they will be here in time for next week. Um, if they don't, I may have to crack on with something else. Um, and pick that up in the new year. Um, I don't know, because obviously it's only a couple of weeks till Christmas, as we said earlier. But we'll take suggestions, we'll see how we go. Happy to do anything with any of those three, and um, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. I, I'm looking forward to all of them, and we will do all of them at some point, maybe in different combos. Um, cheers for Mark, uh, that is the perseverance it paid off. Those boards are absolutely cracking. Um, I have got to end tonight now, um, and I look forward to the suggestions you put forward. Uh, it's been emotional. Don't forget to tune in for the rest of the week. We will see you back here at 9 o'clock next Monday. Cheers, guys.
30 Flights sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley.